Welcome back, Space Cadets, to Hal and Day's trip to Jupiter. In the future, we're still playing Miyamoto's Childhood. <sighs> so we are uh, playing the first Legend of Zelda. This is the first time we've actually gone beyond the 16-bit era. Many yep. years ago, Prince of Darkness, Ganon, stole one of the Triforce with power. Um, Hal, I hate to tell you this, you've just been banned from every Legend of Zelda form. <laughs> why, why is that? Uh, the, the spelling of Ganon, man. I mean, come on. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> is it with two ends <laughs> or one? This is the original translation. <laughs> this is the original translation, complete with English. Uh, yes, it's our favorite thing ever. <laughs> um, I like how it lists all the... There, there are later releases of this game that correct that <laughs> and make the opening less Englishy. Well, fair enough. I do like how it lists all the items ahead, you know, like, hey... This is what you can expect. These are all important. And the Triforce. Please look up the manual for details. Uh, by the way, uh, according to this, and it's canon, Link is a girl. No. Okay. Uh, Joking. No. No, I'm I, I like that there's kind of a, a saber or rapier down there, because that is not a Zelda sword. So... I, I was playing around just to test this with my uh, lunk, but we're gonna we're gonna register ourselves. What what are we calling ourselves today? Uh, we're gonna call it you know something. We're gonna call him Slam. <laughs> we are uh, Slam, the hero of Hyrule. Yeah, we're gonna Slam Jam. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> is the turbo function still on? Maybe it is. <laughs> we are Slam. <laughs> I like that. We're slam. <laughs> slam. Uh, Come on and jam, and welcome to the all slam. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I think I, I think I disabled turbo. <laughs> so here we are on the first screen. It's, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Da -na -na -na. Oh. Okay. We got the sword. Yep, we shoot sword beams. This is a, a pretty, like, unique concept. I know it's been gone over before, but it's like, you're on the first screen and you don't even have a weapon, and so you go into the one cave that's available to you. But uh, now we're, we're off on a grand adventure, and this is an important game to me, because it really introduced the concept of what an adventure game was to me. Well, it's Zelda. It, Zelda is an iconic game for a lot of reasons. One, Link has one of the best designs for a character in gaming, I think. I, I think so, and I think they've only continued to expand on that over time. Uh, the idea of, like, this dude who just carries a lot of stuff with him, different weapons and items and figures out stuff, while, and his look in general, like, he has kind of like an anime uh, Lord of the Rings look to him. Well, uh, I think it's important to note that in this game, Link was supposed to be like a little boy. The The idea of like Kid Link in Ocarina of Time uh, it follows off of what was established in like the original Zelda and A Link to the Past. Whereas the more adult Link that we came to know, also thanks to Ocarina of Time, it, you know, exists in later games. Uh, yes it does. But uh -oh. Octorox! Octorox! It's funny that Octorox are such a big enemy in this game. They're, they're even doing a lot of damage to me, but we are going over here, which is... This is where the first dungeon is. Yeah. And we are inside, which is sort of a checkpoint, thankfully. So even if we do fall in battle, we'll restart from here. That makes sense. Which, uh, hopefully we can uh, delay the inevitable a little bit longer than this. You got a key! Woo! Th this game is pretty hard, actually. Which is why I have my faithful navigator, Dave, helping me out right uh, here. Yes, you do. Now I just go. <laughs> now I just gotta get back to the world map. If you can figure out how to use my tablet, it's, it's the worldmap.png. Uh, <laughs> oh, god dang it. Uh, <laughs> that's our and first step. And died. Stealth so I'm gonna need you to help me uh, get back to that. Thank oh, you. That one. Alright. So we're just going to continue. <laughs> we're good at this game, we swear. Uh, yes, we promise we, you. We, we might be lying when we swear that. Actually, we, we have two key two keys currently. Uh, 
But uh, th this game is interesting because it lays down a lot of foundations for what would later come in the Zelda series. And one of the reasons why I want to go for this is there, there's a lot of callbacks to this in later Zelda games. Especially like uh, Hyrule Warriors and Breath of the Wild call back to this game a lot. Well, and there's a lot of classic elements. Well, in general, this is, it's kind of interesting to see how right they kind of got it on the first go round. They, they definitely did. Um, Th these are the stealth of Especially by the way. <laughs> if you compare it to uh, its sequel. Which, uh, Zelda 2? Uh, Zelda 2 is an interesting game. I don't think it's bad, but it's just one of the things that, like, you know, it's different. So it ends up being, like, not as well regarded. It's not even like a Mario 2 situation, because. Super Mario, I, I, look, I know about the whole Doki Doki Panic thing. Yeah, Mario 2 was originally a whole different game, but Zelda 2 was very intentional on their part. Yeah, well, well, at least with Doki Doki Panic and stuff, there are mechanics that are very similar to each other. At the very least, the bouncing on enemies, it does seem to an extent yeah. like an expansion. Plus with the multiple different characters. Now, as soon as we can get our hands on, like, a boomerang, we'll be doing much better against enemies like this. Yeah. But until then, we just have our trusty sword that can't shoot beams anymore. Yeah, the, the sword beams are exclusive to full health, which is kind of an interesting thing, because after... They, they reappear in A Link to the Past, and then they're gone, pretty much. They never... I, I think it's one of those things of... It's, uh... Because of, like, the later item diversity that shows up... Eastmost Peninsula is the secret! Okay, thank you! <laughs> That... Th thanks, old man. I, I don't know. That was a pretty simple puzzle. Like, you just push this block over. That's really about as complicated as puzzles tend to get in this game. It's... You just gotta find the right block to push. These Hershey's Kisses of Doom, though, bother me. Uh, they're slimes without the happiness. <laughs> they have no joy in their lives. No, they don't. But this is the map. The map takes us... It shows us the way. Admittedly, this kind of does show, like, very simple... Oh yeah, so we're, we can already see that the, the map at the top of the screen shows us the shape of the, the labyrinth we're in, the dungeon we're in. It's a lamp. It's a magical lamp. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, every dungeon in this game has a certain shape to it. That, that's very neat. Now, my first Legend of Zelda was Link's Awakening, which is very untypical Zelda, I would say. I uh, it takes a lot of elements from both this game and A Link to the Past and fuses them into a very good game. Oh, it's a good game! I Look, it exposed me to the wonders of the Chain Chomp. Oh, check this out. We got bombs already. That guy just dropped it randomly. Yay, we got a bomb! Let's... Oh, okay, so these are fun. Uh, oh, I remember these. Yeah, these uh, sliding spike objects. Once again, we, we just push this thing to the side, and we're kind of in this sudden, like, side-scrolling perspective. It's kind of funny, because yeah. there's a fan game called, like, I believe, what, I don't, I forget what it's called, Super Mario Bros. Crossover. Oh yeah, Super Mario Crossover, I have played that on Newgrounds. Oh, yeah, and I've played a couple different versions of it that have updated to include more characters. A, like, one changes Mega Man's high jump with a rush thing. Uh-huh. And a couple other things, but, you know, that's right they use to have... Link in that game. Oh, of course. Although, they, they probably should have chosen the Zelda 2 sprite so that he could be a side-scrolling character. Yeah, I guess, but, you know... But I, I think they use this one in Mario Maker, so whatever. Uh, I can iconography, you know, you, you gotta keep... Oh, it's it's super classic. Again, like, this is the sprite they use in Hyrule Warriors when they have the adventure mode. I, I love the number of callbacks that game makes. Yeah, but now, like... So, well, before when we defeated these guys, they randomly dropped a bomb, and that was a random occurrence. And our health is full, so we can sword beam these guys. Woo! Sword beam! But on defeat, they yield a boomerang. Which oh, we can man. select over here and use with the B button, which is extremely useful. I can tell. Um, but I can see why they got rid of the sword beam for one reason. To encourage uh, item diversity. Well, sword beam doesn't make as much sense in 3D anyways. Especially when you start... So, uh, it's a dragon. Uh, the first boss. Uh, this guy's called Aquamentus. Aquamentus, I uh, love it. Yeah, I like to think that he is a very wet Mentos. <laughs> but with sword beams, we can make really short work of him. And he drops a heart container, which immediately raises up our hearts. 
and we have the first piece of the Triforce, because it kind of scrolled by really quickly, but the idea is that Ganon has the Triforce of Power, Zelda took the Triforce of Wisdom and cut it into eight pieces. Well... And so we're collecting the Triforce of Wisdom because the Triforce of Courage has not been like established conceived. yet. Yeah, that, that's not till Zelda too. Well, admittedly, there's a lot of elements like I, I I can understand establishing the Triforce of Courage later on because it's like well it's the Triforce. Well, like because uh, a link to the past is a little bit of a reboot almost where they start to establish a lot of new things. Well, I think that's the first game where we actually start getting consistent lore. Yeah, because the the concept of like the three goddesses becomes a much more consistent thing. At now, that point. I'll I'll let me talk about Nintendo for a thing. <laughs> they love fighting against having a story as best they can. Now they, they do it every game they possibly can. Yeah, uh, and I, I especially Star Fox. <laughs> yeah, basically. Now, on the one hand, I understand that they want to focus on the gameplay, the core elements, and that's a perfectly reasonable thing. It's not, not every game has to be like 10 hour long cutscenes, Final yeah. Fantasy story. Uh, it, it must have been quite a battle at whatever boardroom to uh, get voiceovers in Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I can imagine. So the idea, it must also be hard because they want to keep Link this character you can insert yourself as. So giving him a voice or at least a consistent voice in some way can also just be like, uh... Yeah, no, we we don't want these characters. We want people to imagine them, not like have them be consistent. Especially because Nintendo, you know, uh, as weird as it is, they they think of their characters in like what they're meant for. So Link will always be the adventuring dude. That uh, like that's kind of one of the reasons why they think of Zelda in a specific way in her role in the game. So they keep her in that role, and they also think of Link in that role. So, you know. So, I'm, I'm meandering my way to the next dungeon, by the way. <laughs> I can tell. But, get the fairy, get the fairy! Uh, Moblins, fairy! Uh, it's out of my reach. Fairy! Oh, yeah, uh, it's gone. She's, she's gone. Why must tiny women evade me? Um, uh, look, there's a lot of tiny things about you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. But anyway, uh, let's move on. But, so, the, the cool thing, though, still, Nintendo, it's kind of fascinating to see how much they put into helping uh, the Xenogear, uh, Xenoblade, yeah. Oh, no, Xenoblade was something that Iwata believed in. That's how that game happened. Yeah, no. It's kind of fascinating to see something like Xenoblade, which is basically, like, do whatever you want. No, uh, he, he gave him, like, an extra year, and he was like, finish this game. Finish it. For great justice. But no, um, that's kind of important to... Uh, you know what? Check on the map really quick. I want to make sure that there's nothing on this space that we're missing. Alright, see. Uh-oh. <laughs> too late! Too late! Found it! Okay, no. Uh, it's a secret to everybody. Okay, so this particular line actually recurs in basically every Zelda game somewhere. I'm trying to... I'm trying 30 to... rupees. Oh, cool. That's a good thing. Nice. So, uh, we're, we're kind of out here. I think the All dungeon's right. a little farther to the east. Oh, you can Or can't. we... No. Nope. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Like, which but, dungeon uh, are you trying I'm, to get I'm to? Number two. I'm trying to go to number two. Yeah, okay, so... Alright, uh, go back up and pause for a second. But I'm busy dying over here. Oh, okay. Octorox. Uh, oh, what no. I was going to say about Octorox is that they don't play nearly as prominent a role in later games as they do in this one. Yeah, so you want to get to the other screen. To the left? Yeah, you, you right. kind of... I passed it? Yeah, you passed it a little while ago. Whoops. The, okay, so, like, this game is kind of on the obtuse side. It's screen by screen. All right, you want to go down? Apparently it was kind of a programming revolution when, like, Super Mario Brothers figured oh, out how yeah. to scroll the screen. So, so you want to go down and then to the left. Go okay. left. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, so we're going west, you would say? Yes, westward. And go west, young Link. And on oh, that, here we go. Yeah, and on that is uh, Dungeon 2. Yeah, no, I gotcha. Uh, oh yeah, so my shield is always up as long as I'm facing a certain direction. So if an enemy like an Octorok fires a rock at me, it will actually be blocked if I'm not doing anything else. 
but it does not account for like collision with enemies, which is kind of the bane of your existence in this game. It's well, it's where the challenge comes from. Yeah, th there's a this game. At first, it's pretty playable, but then later on, there's some. Uh, oh my god, my eyes are vibrating. Oh god, the seizure. blue and red. Oh god, Superman, why did you piss on this dungeon? It wasn't me. It was Optimus Prime. Or Spider Man. Oh, so we got the magic uh, stopwatch. Time stop. <laughs> it stops time and gives us this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you were missing the dungeon. I had to... Sorry I asked you to pause for a second, but I... I uh, okay, now I'm getting this map. Okay, uh, I... Uh, yeah, you can get the map out if you want. Oh, so we have one key, and that was from this dungeon, but it's actually possible if you don't unlock all the doors in a certain dungeon, keys carry over in this game. Mm. And this is the only game that does that. That makes sense. I can see why later games abandoned that, though. Yeah, but I'm actually going to use it to try to uh, move one over here, because if I remember right, we can make use of our bombs to take some shortcuts. And once you get the compass, the compass does not point north. It points to the Triforce location. So... If we go over and use some bombs, I think we can bomb here to do this. Yay! Secret doors! Secret and we door. have the map. So this one's a crescent moon. Okay, yeah, I can see it. And if we just keep bombing our way through here, we can kind of <laughs> clear out a whole bunch of the dungeon without having to use too many keys. Woo! The thing about Zelda 1 is, like, it's one of those games... Oh, these guys. All right. Uh, lots of fireballs, and death. And, uh, that's you die. <laughs> Speaking of death, our own death, death incoming. Well, I'm gonna do my best as the drunken met navigator. How are you doing as a drunken driver? <laughs> they let me out here into space. <clears throat> anyway. Fortunately, uh, I think our pathways will stay open. Hopefully. Uh, go away, rope. These well, are called rope. They are snakes called rope. Oh man, thank you, rope, for the help and the time stop at the last. Time stop! Oh, nobody's here. I'm alone. <laughs> We're all alone, frozen in time. All by myself. But, uh, yeah, okay, this is good because our, our doorways stay open. This this game was apparently developed alongside Super Mario Brothers, but it had its own set of uh, like design document information. So I might. If I can get them close together, I might try to bomb them. Uh, move carefully. Ah, they're hard to beat. If we can defeat them, if we can defeat them, uh, you get a magic boomerang. All which right. is an immediate upgrade on our previous boomerang. Well, good luck. Uh, thanks, I'll need it. <laughs> um, okay. In general, Zelda's a fascinating game to at least look by, especially because it's... Uh, it's kind of like I I would call it to an extent the daredevil of uh of uh daredevil. The, that's an interesting statement. Well, there's a reason why Zelda in general has okay. So uh, when I refer to something as daredevil, I usually it has a specific connotation to how I refer to a series and its place inside like a you know a bigger company. Daredevils are usually the acclaimed series that always have something good going on in them, and are, but they're not the main franchise. I am going to see what's over here on the left side of the moon. So, to give you an idea, like, Daredevil, nope. in, da in general, Daredevil has few bad eras to it. It's one of the few comic book characters who's been around, who a lot of people just like all the comics. Huh, Okay. And, oh, hello, Rope. But Daredevil's also not the most important character for Marvel. Time stop. And the reason I refer to it is that, and people will argue with me, is that Zelda isn't the main franchise of, you know, Nintendo, to an extent. Well... I would call it important, though. It's, it's my understanding that uh, Zelda actually has done way better in the West than it has done in Japan. I can see that. Because it, it appeals to Western tastes. It's this, like, kind of medieval fantasy setting, save the princess. Whereas, uh, like, 
Same thing with Metroid. Like, Metroid is way bigger in the U.S. than anywhere else. Well, you know, it's alien, basically. Yeah, because it's based on the movie Alien. In Japan, they want stuff that's based on Japanese stuff. Yeah, that's fair. That, not, that's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Alright, so we're, we're kind of, like, foregoing... The... Uh, we're foregoing the Magic Boomerang just for a moment. Because I want to try to actually clear the dungeon. <laughs> you're just like... Uh, you're just like... No, because okay. it hurts. Uh... So, what are we fighting? Uh, s snake. 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 No. Uh, um, yeah, it's like it's kind of like those uh, fire chains from Mario or something. Yeah. I don't even know. That, that's that's well, one of the things about this game is there's a lot of like weird obtuse stuff in here. And you're like, what are we even doing? Well, like I said, I, actually, Metroid might be a better example of a Daredevil uh, series. Metroid is the most obtuse, uh, at least in this first game. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, I agree. Uh, Get the heart. Die. Yeah, I don't want to die. Oh, they're stopped. Your asses are mine, snakes. But Zelda, I, there hasn't to me been a really bad... Oh, look, I know you're going to bring this up. There hasn't been a bad Zelda game made by Nintendo. There. I mean, yeah, the, definitely, like, there, there's certain Zelda games that I would say are, like, less good, but there's, like, no, like, truly bad one in the bunch. I can't think of a really horrible Zelda game out <laughs> if there. If we ever get the chance, uh, I will play Skyward Sword and defend it. <laughs> uh, Skyward Sword, while it does have the Wii controllers, as I, as it's been put All to right, me... Alright, so we have, uh, King Dodongo. Oh, Truly yeah. an intimidating uh, Man, try. I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. I can't wait. You just. Okay, what is it? Like two bombs? Two bombs does it, and he's done. Come here, fairy. Yeah. And we've already cleared dungeon number two. Yep. We are the best. We are. We're the best. All around. around. No one's gonna, gonna take, take you it. down. Uh, I believe it's no one's ever gonna take you down. Oh. I um, tried. It, you, Dave, I do not understand music. Um, one day you'll learn, and one day you'll get an F by your music teacher, and he'll tell you you'll fail, and your band won't succeed, and then you won't go to New York, and then the world won't see you. Uh, man, I just had a weird flashback there. Anyway! Find out more about weird flashbacks next time on Hal and Dave's Trip to Jupiter. Will we win? Who knows? <laughs>